Welcome ladies and gentlemen to our program. So this is just a continuation on the world of financing. So my recent video was based on the financial freedom. So today we're going to look at the differences between student loans and business loans. So it's simply this topic will be based in Europe. First point we're going to look at the purpose and use of funds. The second point it will be based on the eligibility criteria which simply means the qualifications of receiving loan. The third point it will be it will be based on the interest rates and repayment terms. The fourth point it will be based on the government versus private financing. So the government is the public, then with private is simply individuals and businesses or companies. Then the fifth point it will be based on the loan amounts, which simply means the size that can be borrowed. Then the sixth point it will be based on the repayment flexibility and forgiveness, forgiveness of loan. Then the seventh point and the last one it will be based on the risk and the collateral. Then after that, I'm going to give a quick summary at the end, just as I usually do in all the videos, to sum up really what we learned in each video. So are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Tighten your belt and let's begin our topic. So first of all, there are some misunderstandings really when it comes to loans, student loan versus business loans. So most of the people say like student loans are much easier to get than business loans. Is it true? Is it just a myth? So we're going to, I'm going to remove all of that mis misconceptions or misunderstandings. So in this case, if, if that is true, then I'll say collateral is acts as a backbone in this case, because in the case of uh, student loans, there's no need of collateral. So it is non-collateral. So in the case of collateral, it's like a pledge or guarantee or backup or security, which you need before you get any loan or you receive any loan from government or private. Uh, creditors. In the case of business loans, collateral is required, which can be personal or business assets, which can be a house or any property. In the case of business, can be like equipment. So you need some backup really before you receive business loans. Then the third point is like the government supports education, but not business startups. Is it true or false? So we're going to see all of that in this episode, in this video. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. That new belt. And if you've got your seat, your cup of coffee, get your coffee, get ready, or cup of tea, let's begin. So this this actually it's based in the European European Union, can be anywhere really, America, Australia, Africa, Asia, you can apply everywhere really, all day, all around the world. So in Europe, student loans and business loans serve two very distinct purposes and operate under different terms, interest rates, repayment structure, and eligibility criteria in the case of interest rates it's just like the mechanism which the government use to control the inflation or deflation really so in the case of inflation it's just the rise of price right through the specific or given time or specific time so i'm going to we're going to explore really these differences in details focusing on their respective really characteristics across various european countries eu union european union so the first point we're going to start the purpose and use of funds. In this case, we're talking about loans. The purpose now and use of those funds or loans. So in the case of student, so I'm going to give a student loan, business loan, student loan, the comparison. So the first point is to be based on the student loans, the purpose and use of funds under the, the heading. So the purpose is like student loans are specifically significant, like designed to help individuals finance their education. So the loan, you take the loan as a student to finance your education, to help you finish your education. So these funds can be used to cover tuition fees, education fees, like accommodation as well, renting a room, books and other living expenses during the study period. That is the purpose of a student loan. The example, like in countries like the UK, United Kingdom and Sweden, student loans are offered to cover not only tuition fees, but also maintenance costs of living for living expenses. In the case of living expenses, it cover everything really, like transportation and things like that, going from A to B. So limitations in the case of student loans, like the funds cannot be used for anything outside of educational expenses, outside of education expenditures, expanding. So it is a personal loan designed for individual use only. So in the case of student loans, just for individual use only, you yourself as a student. So under the same heading, the purpose and use of funds, now we're going to look at the business loans. So the purpose of business loans, on the other hand, are intended to fund business-related activities, such as launching a new business, like in this case, it still be like startup, expanding an existing one, 
or covering operation costs. That's the purpose. So the example of that, like a business loan in France or Germany, might be used to purchase like equipment, hire staff, like uh, employees in this case, or lease co commercial properties. In this case, lease is like rent or rent out commercial properties. So flexibility in the case of business, like business loans offer more flexibility in the use of funds as they are meant for various business needs like growth, innovation, or working capital as well which is good capital it's all about money in this case because this business financial really terms so the second heading we're going to look at the eligibility criteria or the qualifications you need to meet some qualifications be before you, you receive the loan so in the case of student loans it's like the criteria is li it's like the criteria which are needed for the students like to qualify for student loan in europe you must be enrolled in accredited educational institution and accredited in this case like known by the government so in many european countries citizenship or residency is required to access student loan benefits you have to be a citizen in some european countries before you receive the student loan that is like the requirements or the criteria you have to meet the criteria the example of that so in germany student needs to be eu citizens european union citizens or meet the residency criteria to qualify for the government backed student loan that's the requirement in germany credit score requirements as well in the case of student loan we're talking about the gpa which is a credit point average in europe or ireland is like four that's like the gpa so in some countries you might the credit score might be required so the credit score requirement like most student loans especially government back ones do not require a credit check that not require they don't care about your gpa which is the credit point average in the case of business loans now so the criteria as well in the case of business loan like eligibil eligibility for business loans depend on various factors such as the type of business in the case of type of business it can be like you're a solid trader solopreneur or solo uh, uh, you are working yourself self-employment or llc which is limited labor company those are like the types of businesses you need the credit the credit history as well is required business plan in the case of business plan workbook i've done the video on that check out on the my youtube channel and in some cases collateral so in the case of collateral is some having some guaranteed or property which act as a backup so the example of that let's say in the netherlands some people confuse that is it netherlands is it holland so holland is just a region in netherlands and the holland divides into two provinces we have northern north holland Holland and the South Holland is just a, reg a region inside the Netherlands. So in the case of Netherlands, business owners need a well-established business plan and proof of a steady revenue to qualify for business loans from banks like the Rabobank. There's the, in the case of, we have to meet the criteria or the requirements in the case of Holland, Netherlands. So credit score in the case of business, credit score requirement, a good personal or business credit score is necessary or often necessary. In some cases, providing collateral is a requirement or is required for securing large amounts of money. So collateral is a backup requirement, a guaranteed, we have to provide. So we're going to look at the third point, ladies and gentlemen, which is interest rates and repayment terms. So we said it, interest rates is just a mechanism which the government used to control in the case of the inflation or deflation. So if the interest rate goes high, like from 5 to 20%, discouraging people from borrowing. If it goes lower from 20 or 15 to 5 or 0, then you're encouraging more people to come to borrow. So in the case of interest rates and the repayment terms, you have to meet the terms and conditions. All uh, you have to meet the terms and conditions as usual. So we have to start the second heading first. The third, we're in the third heading. So the student loans. I said I'm going to divide them: student and business. So student loan in the case of inter interest rates, like student loans often come with lower interest rates than business loans, and many European countries or governments subsidize or subsidies, which means they go easy on interest or offer zero interest loans in the case of a student most of the students get zero interest loans the example of that like let's say in denmark student loans like the su su loans offer zero or very low interest rates to citizens or to the students so repayment terms the terms and conditions like repayment is typically deferred or delayed until after graduation in the case of a student and in some cases 
A grace period is provided before the borrower is required to start making payments. A grace like forgiveness, thing like that. So the example of that, like in the UK, student loans are repaid once the graduates. His income reaches a certain threshold or maximum point with a percentage deducted or taken from earnings rather than a fixed amount. So instead of having a fixed amount to repay your loans as a student in the UK, United Kingdom, the percentage, some percentage will be deducted or taken from your earnings rather than having a fixed amount every month or every at the end of every, every month or at the end of every week. So in the case of business loans, like interest rates, so business loans generally have higher interest rates compared to student loans due to the higher risk involved for lenders. In the case of lenders, they are the creditors. So if you borrow, you, you become debtor. If you lend the money, you become a creditor. So the rates vary significantly, like depending on the lender, the creditor in this case, the size of the loan, the amount of money which you want to borrow, and the business is credit worthiness as well, credit worthiness. The example, let's like say in Italy, business loans may come with varying interest interest rates, interest rates depending on whether they are backed by the government programs or private institutions or private banks in this case. So repayment terms in the case of business uh, loans as well. So business loans usually come with fixed or variable repayment schedules. Fixed or can be changeable as well, variable, if you can vary, it's changeable. So terms may, may range, let's say, from a few months to several years, and the repayment starts soon after the loan is issued. In the case of business, repayment is started soon after the loan is issued or given. In the case of student, you can be, there's it some time really you have to meet a certain threshold. There will be just a percentage taken from earnings rather than having a fixed amount. So in the case of business, repayment start as soon as the loan is issued. A quick example of that, because I like to be on the practical side, practicality. So a business loan, let's say in Spain, may require monthly repayments or payments starting immediately with interest calculated based on the loan, loan duration as well. So it's start like a repayment or paying immediately after the interest calculated based on the loan duration. It can be like 12 months or 22 months, depending on the amount which you want to borrow. The higher the amount, the, the longer the years you're going to pay as well. So the fourth point, we're going to look at the government versus fin private finan like financing, which means public, which is a government. Private is all about individuals and businesses or companies, financing or banking. So in the case of student loans, so you have to divide it again into two sections. So the government backed in the case of student. So most student loans in Europe are backed by the government, like offering more favorable terms and lenient or steady repayment structures, which is good. They may also have a forgiveness options in case of financial hardship. So if the student, is the, the data become as having some financial hardships, they may have some forgiveness options in that case. Like the example of that, let's say in France, the government provides low interest or zero interest loans, such as those through the CRUS, the CRO US system in France. So private loans as well in the case of student. Some countries also have private student loans providers. True, though they are less common due to the availability of state-backed schemas. So they because they are less common, because the government actually are doing that already. So you don't need any private providers. You don't need many of them. They're not necessary in this case. So in the case of business as well, government support. So business loans may be offered by government bodies or banks or institutions especially to encourage entrepreneurship and innovation in the case of uh, inspiration motivation you want to encourage the innovation and competition as well if it is capitalism but if it is socialism there's no competition there's no um, the profit is not the main the lowest common denominator so for instance the eu is a european investment uh, fund the eif I, eif european investment fund provides loan and guarantees for startup which is business startup so private lenders as well, in the case of business loans, the majority of business loans are provided by private banks or, fa or financial institutions. Business owners may also seek loans from alternative sources like the crowdfunding platforms or venture capital firms and sometimes angel helpers as well. You might get angel helpers, they might help you to start, to start up your own business or try to help you in the case of bankruptcy as well. So a quick example, let's say in Germany, entrepreneurs can apply for loans from the KFW, a 
government owned uh, development bank or from private banks like the Deutsche Bank as well. So the fifth point we're going to look at the loan amounts, how much you can borrow or the size that can be borrowed, the size of money, the capital in this case. So we're going to start again the student loans. So loan size in the case of students. So student loans tend to be smaller compared to business loans as they are only need to cover the cost associated with education. So you cannot cover anything beyond that. So just student loans, accommodation, uh, paying for maybe traveling and things like that, books and just covering all the education related. So in a quick example, let's say in Finland, student loans might range from 5,000 euros or 5K to 10K euros per year, depending on the tuition or education fees and living cost or daily cost as well. So annual caps or limits. So many European student loan programs have caps or limits on the amount that can be borrowed each year. So the business loans, in the case of business, on the amount which can be borrowed. So loan size, like business, business loans are typically much larger than student loans as they need to cover broader financial needs for the business. So for example of that, let's say a small business in Ireland might secure a loan between 50,000 euros, 50K, to 5,000 or 500, 500K euros to expand operations or invest in new technology. So in the case of technology, it's all about development, research and development as well. So no fixed cap in the case of a business, no fixed cap or no fixed limit like a student. So in the case of business loans, amounts vary based on the lender or the creditor, business type as well, and collateral, often exceeding millions of euros for established businesses. In the case of established businesses, like the business which is already in the move on the market. It's not a startup. So number 6.6, .6, we're going to look at the repayment, flexibility, and forgiveness. In the case of forgiveness, it's like the grace. You might be forgiven all your loans. Like the case of America, Joe Biden said, because of the COVID, because of this, I'm going to forgive all the student loans. So just forgive like that. You don't, need to, you don't have to pay any loan in the future. So forgiveness as well, and the grace, repayment and forgiveness in the case of students. The case of loan repayment can take like 10 to 30 years repayment. The case of student so repayment flexibility so many european student loans offer flexible repayment options such as the income-based repayment schemas so in the case of student you will be paying loan according to your income your wages or salaries so the example of that let's say norway student can extend the repayment period or reduce monthly payments based on their income wages or salaries so you're going to repay or pay back based on how much you're getting, your income, the cash flow, the inflow, the, the money which comes in. So loan forgiveness as well, like being forgiven or taking, taking off all the stress from you as a student. So in some countries, loans may be forgiven after a certain period or under specific conditions, such as working in the public sector or government sector. So if you're working for the government and if you're a student, you own loan, you might be, for, you might be forgiven. All your loans are just going to be written off. So let's say, for example, in the UK, United Kingdom, any outstanding student loan debt is written off or forgiven after 30 years if it hasn't been fully repaid. There's the laws of UK. After 30 years, all your loans, the student loans, will be written off if it hasn't been fully repaid. So in the case of business loans, it might, like the time span is very low, sometimes given two years, five years, or 10 years repayment based on how much you've borrowed or how big is your company, the revenue as well, which you're getting. So repayment flexibility in the case of business loan. So business loans may offer some flexibility, some flexibility, depending on the lender or the creditor, but generally they require more like stringent or strict or firm and the timely repayments. In the case of business, you have to be the most strict in the case of repayment. There's no jokes in this case. So you have to be really continuously, you have to pay continuously really. It's all about consistency in this case. So loan forgiveness in the case of business loans. There are typically no forgiveness options for business loans unless tied like to specific government relief programs. In the case of relief programs, they might forgive you as well, such as the COVID-19 loan forgiveness schemes offered across Europe. So if it is tied to loan like the COVID-19 loan forgiveness schemes, and if you are in Europe, you might be forgiven if you are business, if you own business loans. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at the point seven, which is all about the risk and the collateral. So we say collateral is something pledged or guaranteed as security for a payment of a loan. That's all about the meaning of collateral. 
So don't be confused when someone says collateral. Collateral sounds good. <laughs> so student loans, in the case of risk of student loans, the risk as well. So to wage the reward and the risk because it's all about financial like investment really. So in the case of risk, student loans generally pose less risk to the borrower, which is a debtor. You are, if you borrow money, you become the debtor. Since they're off, they often don't require collateral and are structured to be more forgiving in case of financial hardship. In the case of collateral, we still on the student. Like collateral is usually not required for student loans. In the case of collateral, it's like guarantee, security, pledge, or anything personal or business assets is not required for student loans. You don't need to present anything before you get a student loan. So if the borrower, you or the debtor, defaults or re refuse to repay in this case or refuse to pay, there are no assets that the lender or the creditor can seize. So if you refuse to pay or if you cannot make the payment on the time span which you're given as a student loan, the lender or the creditor will not have anything to say because you did, there's no collateral. You didn't put anything in advance, like personal business assets or house in your own name because you're still a student. So in the case of business loans as well, under the risk and the collateral, risk of business loans, like business loans are riskier because the, the success of the business determines the ability to repay the loan. If the business comes becomes successful, in that case, if you try to overcome the two or five years which many businesses usually fail then that will be much easier for you to repay the loan but if it fails in that time span it will become much harder for you which means more riskier because the success of the business determines your ability to repay the loan so failure of the business may lead to loan default in the case of loan default is all about the breach of your loan agreement when you delay in repayments, when there are many delays in repayment, that's what is called the loan default. So collateral as well, like many business loans, require collateral, guarantee, security, pledge, you have to pledge something, such as business assets or personal assets as well, personal guarantees or property, it can be a house, to secure the loan. So if you don't repay your loans as a business uh, loans, if you take a business loans, and if you don't repay your loans on the specific time span, they'll come and take your house, your property, business, personal property, business property, whatever you have, they'll come and take it because of you need the agreement there before you take a loan. So you need to have something valuable for them to offer you that amount of money if you're a business owner. But if you're a student, you don't need any collateral, you don't need any guarantee. Just say, I want loan, I'm a student, I'll start paying when I start getting some income. And there's no fixed amount in the case of repayment. You'll be only paying according to how much income, how much salary, or how much inflows, the wages you're getting, you're receiving. That's when you, the percentage will be deducted from your earnings or your wages. So what can we say, ladies and gentlemen, about all of these differences between the student loans and business loans? Is the myth true that the government often prefer the student loans, but they do not give the business loans like it's supporting the startup? So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, or in conclusion, in Europe, because it's based in Europe, but it's not any different from any continent there, Africa, Europe, America, Asia. Everywhere really is the same concept, people crying for the same thing. So in Europe, like student loans and business loans are, te are tailored to meet the unique needs of individuals pursuing education. And then other, on, the, on the other hand, businesses seeking growth. So the major differences between the student and business loans lie in their purpose, qualification requirement, like eligibility criteria, repayment terms and risk as well. Like student loans are typically government backed of flexible repayment as well and cater to educational expenses education needs which is all our expenditures really like or expense spending on the other hand business loans in construct on the other hand are high risk often require collateral security pledge or guarantee something like that personal business asset and provide large amount of money for entrepreneurial or like corporate activities or business activities. So understanding these distinctions is crucial for making informed borrowing decisions based on your needs and goals, both as a student or a business owner. So I think I've cleared all the misunderstandings based on the student loan or the business loan, which one is the best or which one does the government um, Really, or does the government trust the student more than the business startup or business owners? So I think, ladies and gentlemen, I've got all the misunderstandings. As usual, don't forget to like, sharing as well. 
and keep your comment coming as well like sharing comment subscribing to our channel because we want to grow we want to spread the message removing all the mis misunderstandings as well as usual ladies and gentlemen have a great day thanks for watching ciao Bye.